Um, when and how did I start to play electronic music? Um, when I was very young, I first used a computer, a Commodore VIC-20 computer, when I was 10 years old to make uh, write programs in BASIC. So starting very young, always with computers. Um, and then, um, yeah, so yeah, 10 years old. I was 10 years old when I started. So that would have been 1982 or 83. Mm -hmm. So a very long time ago. And then um, favorite music styles and artists? Well, I really, uh, I'm the biggest fan of very early electronic music from the 1950s and 1960s. And I have many favorite artists, but to name some, I really enjoy the work of Todd Dockstader. He's probably my favorite composer. Um, working outside of sort of uh, outside of studios, outside of academia, I'm only working at night at a recording studio in New York, making this music concrete kind of music, collage, sample collage, and found sound. But uh, very influential on me because he chose his own very idios idiosyncratic way of making music, and I. I he stayed away from the cliches, you know, in a way. So very powerful music. Um, my first first synthesizer or electronic instrument, well, there was the computer. And then I had an interesting uh, uh, synthesizer called a Multivox, which was I bought at a garage sale, which is like a preset, you know, with um, uh, preset sounds and two-octave keyboard and a filter, but very simple, you know. Um, and I would play this a lot. This was the first one I really became comfortable with. Also, I had things like Casio, you know. Mm -hmm. Casio CZ101 um, Roland uh, TR505 drum machine as well. This when I was, you know, in my teenage years. So those are the first things. First modular synth um, is still some things that I'm using today. You know, it's a dopefer. So some of the original modules uh, still are in my system. I, I, you know, I, that's the beauty of it. You can keep things from 15, 20 years ago, and they still work beautifully with the new modules. It's a standard, you know, system. So. So, so yeah, Dopefer was the first modular. But I, I used Buchla and Surge modulars before. Mm -hmm. um, but the first one that I owned was this, yeah. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I would love to have that no one has done yet is a um, really good pitch tracking mm -hmm. for playing an instrument, like a guitar, into the synthesizer to have a way of doing like, polyphonic pitch detection. This is something that's only very recently possible in software. But I think we're getting to the point now with uh, embedded computing and like, you know, having a Raspberry Pi or a, a Shark DSP or something that would, you could play guitar chords into the synthesizer and have it break the individual voices to control oscillators. This would be a really, really beautiful, powerful thing. So if that's uh, maybe in the next five years, we'll have somebody doing this. The direction we're going now with making software modules, you know, so that would be really good. Uh, expectation of the future of modular synth design. Yeah, like that follows into the previous question. Getting more into um, having dedicated modules for specific tasks, um, granular synthesis, freezing sounds, things like that. Um, more sort of, I'm interested personally in, in spatialization and multi-channel sound, so this is, I think we're getting very good now. There's a guy named um, Andres Gonçalves who lives in, in Portugal, who's doing this really great stuff with spatialization, very new to this sort of modular synthesizer world. Don Buchla did some four-channel things, but I think what Andres is doing is really beautiful. He built a uh, Newtonian physics module, so you, it's almost think about like a marble in a pan, and you're moving it like this, and the marble is bouncing off the walls. So you can do some amazing things with space and sound that way. Um, I, I would like to see more people go in this direction, personally. But I think that the community is getting so big right now, the modular synthesizer community, that it's easier for new companies to start up and instantly have an audience, you know, and instantly have a customer base that more people will be um, releasing new modules and coming up with new and more interesting ideas. And I have nothing but hope for the future. I think it's going to be very good the next few years. Uh, electronic music experimental sound scenes in the U.S. are very good right now. Um, I live in a, in a smaller city called Boston. It's not, not too many people there, but um, we have a very good dedicated community there. And I'm also going to New York a lot in Chicago and San Francisco. There's very big, big scenes, not just for dance music. You know, obviously a lot of this world is rooted in dance music, but also for this more like um, sound art and live electronic music and building instruments and this kind of thing. It's, it's becoming very... Um, a very big community and there's a lot of support there's a lot of um, private sort of institutions that let you do residencies and things like that and I think it's becoming very it's becoming very good but the community where I live yeah it's very small very dedicated and uh, it's very collaborative everybody has uh, can go back and forth and exchange new ideas with each other 
uh, what does electronic music sound mean to you? Um, well, I mean, electronic music is just, I mean, it's all-encompassing these days. I mean, I can't think of any, any music that's not electronic in some nature. Everything on the radio certainly is, you know. Yeah. The example I always used to like to give was, was that, you know, even something like a... Even something like an a cappella song on the radio, uh, just vocals, is run through so many levels of processing and run through so many levels of compression and auto tune and you know what I mean. It's like there's so many levels of it that it almost seems like there is no acoustic music, like popular music anymore. It's all exclusively electronic in some way. Um, we're getting to the point now where where the popular music that's electronic is kind of not really any one genre. There's kind of this beautiful blending of hip hop and R&B and dance music is kind of like there's no one specific sound it's all everything is in the middle now you hear a lot of in the US like hip hop that samples dance music and dance music that samples hip hop and it's kind of like this really open beautiful thing and it's all rooted in the idea of um, you know doing it all in software doing it in a digital audio workstation like Logic or something almost all the music you hear now big you know popular music is somehow uh, it's all made on computers so it kind of stylistic concerns are less of an issue there's less actual genre these days. There's more of this general feeling of electronic music. Um, and then we have we have a big EDM scene, they call it. We, EDM is this kind of weird genre that's somewhere between new metal and dance music. It's kind of not really, it's, it's like a newer term, but it's things like sort of how dubstub got sort of really mutated and kind of fed through this heavy metal kind of thing, and then it was released. Um, and it's very big and very popular. They have these huge outdoor events, you know, they happen all over the country with tens of thousands of people, you know. Um, and that's, I think, recently it's become sort of an uh, alternative youth subculture that's replaced new metal. It's replaced, you know, like kind of rock bands and things like that. Um, so it's interesting to see how people's taste in music have changed really a lot in the last few years. Young kids who would go to the mall and they were, you know, wearing corn t-shirts are now wearing like Skrillex t-shirts. You know, I find the whole thing really interesting. And their, their, their taste in music have changed, you know, so now they're becoming more interested in yeah, like craft work and, you know, and Devo and like all this stuff that was like it would have been off their radar before, but because it makes sense timbrely to them now, um, they've become aware of it in a nice way. So it's more like the, the past of this music has opened up. It's become more um, more known about. Okay, I think that's good. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever been to uh, Asia or Hong Kong? Um, no, I've never been to Hong Kong, actually. That's been, I've been wanting to go for a very long time. Or Bangkok, or, or uh, there's lots of places. I've only ever been to Japan and, and yeah. once before mm. to go to Tokyo and um, Osaka and, and Kyoto once, but like t over 10 years ago. So this is the only time back in 10 years. Okay. Hope you can come to Hong Kong and live later. I'd love to, yeah. I'd always love to go anywhere where there's, I, I, because I feel like this is all relatively new. Okay. Um, you know, maybe traveling even two or three years ago, um, it would be such an, a weird event to, to show up with this modular synthesizer and play music. But now, I mean, there's such a bigger community, you know, everywhere, all over the world, not just in Asia, but everywhere. That suddenly people understand it a little better, I think. It's become a little more known about, and um, maybe I spend less time explaining <laughs> and more time just playing because there's already like a, a previous interest and previous knowledge of, of this technology and this music. So, okay. so. thank you. No problem. Thank you.